So we have Colossus, you go up, around, upside down. I want to know the minimum speed it has to cross over the top at where you won't fall out. Now you're not going to fall out anyway because they have the brace, the belts and safety measures and everything. But where would you, at the minimum speed, where would you start to fall out? Basically, where would your bum leave the seat? Where would you need the braces, the belts and whatever contraptions that you used to hold your hand? So there we are. We're upside down in all our glory. What forces are acting on us, regardless of how fast it's going? As we go up over that curve, what forces are acting on us? Gravity. Gravity. Normal force. Normal force from the seat of the car that we're sitting in. There's also going to be a forward force on us, keeping us moving in the circle as well. I'm not going to draw that one, though. You can, but you don't need to. So, ultimately, force of gravity plus the normal force... That combination is the centripetal force, the net centripetal force on us. That then has to equal our mass times the centripetal acceleration. Now we know the force of gravity is mg. The normal force will vary. The normal force depends upon how fast the car is going. As v changes, the normal force will change as well. <coughs> As V gets smaller, so this right side of the equation gets smaller, the normal force has to get smaller as well. If V gets bigger, the normal force gets bigger as well. So, minimum speed, the smallest V can be, will correspond to the smallest the normal force can possibly be. So the normal force gets less and less and less the slower and slower it goes. So what's the smallest possible value the normal force can have? When it will go to zero. So minimum speed, we're looking at the moment when the normal force goes to zero. If the normal force goes to zero, then we have mg equals mv squared over r. Turns out our mass doesn't matter. So V will be the square root of RG. In this case, I made up an R of 15 meters. G, we know, is 9.8 meters per second squared.
the blood drain from my head. Can't see if uh, blood's not flowing out there. <laughs> uh, it always made me, it, it kind of scared me off of the Colossus there for a while. This is the same concept. Have you ever taken a bucket of water, just goofing around and started swinging it around? It's the same concept. You would change this to the radius of your arm. The forces acting on the water in the bucket would be a normal force in gravity. You would have a minimum speed at which you had to spin the bucket at and not get wet. If you spin it even any slower than that, the water would dump out of the bucket. If it's faster than that, it just produces a bigger normal force, which means you have to hold on to the bucket harder. So same sort of example. So yeah. what do you have to do to calculate what speed you need to be in approaching a loop to, to maintain that 20, 12 meters per second? Uh, the power? easiest approach would be using conservation of energy, which we'll get to later. Um, any, any time you want to relate speed to height, energy is actually the easiest way to go. So we look at the energy it has due to its motion turned into stored potential energy due to its height. We'll get to that. Yes. So it's a horizontal type circle you're spinning? Yeah, you have to keep accelerating in order to maintain energy. You can have a constant speed. Yeah. Um, as it's spinning around, you, basically you have a normal force from the side of the ride pushing on you. And that normal force would equal the MA, where A was B squared over R. So yeah, you could maintain a constant speed, which would maintain a constant normal force. Gravity want to pull you yes. You gravity would want to slide you off. So either you have to have something supporting you, or you have to have enough friction between you and the wall. Yeah, so you have to maintain a certain speed so that it would just fall right off. Mm -hmm. Right. So they used to have a ride like that at Lagoon, that big, huge old cylinder, and you'd stand against the wall, and it would start to spin and spin and spin, and then they'd drop the feet out from under you. They can't drop the feet out from under you until you've reached a certain speed. Okay. But once they drop the feet out from under you, it's friction that's holding you up. But the friction depends upon the normal force. The normal force depends upon how fast it's spinning. So, it's all tied together. Good question. There are actually proposals of building a space station that kind of works along this line. Get it spinning so that if you're inside, you feel the normal force. One of the problems they have with going to space is the effect of weightlessness. It's not that there's no gravity out there, it's that there's no normal force. So the floor of the labs would be, yeah, the space station would be on the mm -hmm. outer radius of the silver. Uh -huh. Or the inner radius. Just watch space on yeah. the side. Yeah. There you go. So, basically they want to get it rotating fast enough to simulate gravity. To produce a normal force so that you feel like you weigh something. A lot of astronauts, um, they have to exercise rather than in space because you lose bone mass and you lose muscle mass if you don't exercise it. 